in the name of Allah the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his apostle. I greet all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum. Once again, it is my joy to be here at Mosque Maryam and to see you. We have embarked on something a little different in that we want to move according to the dictates of time. We don't have a lot of time. So wise people must use time wisely. And every Sunday, we are expecting everyone to be in their seats by 2 o'clock. So we can be out of here by 3.30, no later than 4 o'clock. I noticed that everyone generally waits for the minister. And if the minister is going to come on at 2.30, people will get here just at about that time. You're going to be fooled because I do not intend to speak for long periods of time. I don't think it's necessary. I think I can get you a message in 45 minutes, no more than an hour. As the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, this is a long struggle, the struggle for liberation, and that I should not and must not burn myself out. So I thank all of you who are here on time, and those of you that are here, we shall hopefully reward you with time. Our subject today is time. Most of our people don't do anything on time. And that is tragic. We never start things on time. We never end things on time. We don't go to weddings on time. We hardly are at funerals on time. We don't go to school on time. We don't make work on time. We don't hardly do anything on time. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that a person who does not respect time is a person who has no respect for life. For life and time are synonymous. So from this day forward, if you want to stop being classified as a dead people, as Negroes, as colored people, and if we want to be classified as a living people, as an intelligent people, then everything that we do must be with respect and consideration for time. Okay? Now, we ask ourselves, what is time? What is time? According to the dictionary, time is a measure of duration or a measure of the continuance of time. Now that sounds rather strange. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us a better definition. He said time is motion calculated. Now, if I move my hand from this position to this position, if you measure the motion, you can measure the time. Anything that is not in motion is not making time. So all measurement of time is measured by our relationship to light and our relationship to light is what gives us our motion 
The earth gives us time by the measurement of its motion in rotation and its motion in revolution around the sun. Without the presence of light, the earth would not move. There would be no change. There would be no time. So because the earth has a relationship to the sun and the light of the sun causes the earth to rotate as well as to revolve. It is this rotation that gives us our day. It is the revolution that gives us our year. So time is motion measured. If you're not going any place, you're not making time. If you're not doing anything, you're not making time. So time is a calibration. Time is a scale of balance and measurement. Time dictates action. If there is no activity, there is no time. And the act Activity must be in accord with the direction of light. Are we all right? You sure? Light makes motion. So all motion is in accord with the direction of light. All human beings make time by the light or presence of knowledge. If you are acting in accord with the principle of knowledge, you are acting right. You are on time. Time is a standard. Time is a criterion. Time is a measurement of what we are and what we are not. Time. Time is an indicator. Time indicates whether you're on it or off of it. Time will tell you whether you're right or you're wrong. Time will tell you whether you're going up or you're going down. Because any action that we take that is not in harmony with time is a wasted action that will not bear fruit. Time. The measure of motion. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad pointed us to Ecclesiastes, the preacher, who said, To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. I'm going to say that again. To everything there is a season now that's a very profound statement of course Ecclesiastes goes on to say there's a time to be born a time to die a time to love a time to hate a time to rend a time to sow a time to weep a time to laugh there's a time for everything and everything has a season. Now everything encompasses everything. Now, when something is in season, whatever it is, it is aided by the elements of time. Sun, moon, stars, earth, planets. Whenever you're on season or in season, you have the additional power of the elements working with you. When you're not in season, the elements work against you. Time. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that Adam or the white race was given a time and a season. I'm going to say that again. Adam or the white race 
was given a time and a season to perform a particular purpose. Adam brought onto the earth rebellion to the law and will of God. Now, rebellion has a season. And in the season of rebellion, the elements are going to aid rebellion. But when God declares time is up for rebellion against him, then if you are found in rebellion to God, when the season for rebellion to him has passed, then every action we take in rebellion to God will bring us loss and grief and destruction. But every action we take in obedience to God's will will bring good fruit in the time of God. So God says to Adam, okay, Adam, you want to rebel? Break my commandment? Break my law? Fine. I'm putting you out of the garden. The garden here represents peace, contentment of mind. You're not going to be contented in rebellion to me. But for you, the Quran says, in the earth is an abode, a place, a provision, and a time. Go ahead, do what you want to do. But remember now, this is going to bring apparently good reward to you in your season. But when your season is up, I will come and I will interfere with your power and bring about a new season. And if you don't submit to me, all those who follow you, I will fill hell with you all. So all in Adam die. All in Christ, the scripture says, shall be made alive. Made alive when? When? When it's time. When the season for giving life to those who died under the rebellion of Adam comes, then nothing, no power will be able to hinder the rise of the people. All you have to do is know the time, know the season, then act in a timely way and there is no power that can make you unsuccessful. None whatsoever. So if you say, or we say, we can't make it, white folks don't want to let us do this, or white folks, just a minute, just a minute. Ask yourself, what is the season? If it's the season for him to rule, you're not going to stop his rule. But if his season or time to rule you and me is up, then he has no power to stop you from being free if you want to get up and act in your season. Do you understand? All praise is due to Allah. Now, Marking time on God's clock. We're dealing with motion and time and the presence of light. No one can deny that white people have had a special power working with them. Come on. Let's agree with truth. You do want to agree on truth, don't you? Haven't you noticed that white folk have had a special power working with them? That everywhere they've gone on the earth, they have raised hell, but they profited? Come on, come on. You don't have to be stiff. The truth is the truth. They profited from putting dark people under subjection. Is that right? And nothing that we, the Native Americans, the Indians, the Mexicans, or the darker people of the earth 
could do against white people could stop white people from putting dark people under their rule. Is that right? Well, then, if you do everything in your power to stop something from happening and it yet happens, then check the season. Because for everything, there is a season. And a time for every purpose under the heaven. If that is so, and it is, if God has given a season to the wicked, then the wicked have to do their thing in their season. And the righteous can only try to be as right as we can be, but we're not going to overpower the wicked until their season is up. Are we clear now? Well, when is the season for the wicked to be up? Look like the wicked have been raising hell so long. Seems like God is unjust. Seems like God favors the wicked for every time we have tried to mount up for liberation, for justice, for equity, for righteousness. It seems as though our efforts are undermined and destroyed by the powers of the rulers of the darkness of this world. Huh? Yes, in season, they have been able to do that. But if you could check the clock, you would know what time it is. I'm not talking about the watch on your arm or the clock in the house. I'm talking about checking time by the prophets of God and the light that they brought. If you know the time, then you know that the season of the wicked has come to an end. If you know the time, then you know that the wicked will not prosper today. If you know the time, then you know the wicked are not going to prosper today. And if you who and I, who have been reared by the wicked, as the scripture says, born in sin and shaped in iniquity. If we continue to be iniquitous or rebellious or wicked, we're not going to be successful. There is no way, black man and woman, that we are going to be successful playing the game of white folk. If you want to be successful today, don't play their game. If you want to be successful today, don't follow them in evil. Because the season is up. Now let's prove it. Y'all all right? I got to check this. Um, this wireless microphone here to see. If it is on, brother, grab this and see if it is on. I know this microphone is on, but the other one may not be. Now, how do we measure time? Did you know that prophets of God are considered God's stars? And did you know that when a prophet of God a major prophet comes into the world that man is a major measure of time and if you can read the prophet you can read the time listen the Bible tells us that Adam had six days to rule the scripture says a day with the Lord is as 1,000 years. You have in the Christian family a group that is called the Seventh-day Adventists. The Advent, Advent means coming to or toward. The seventh day is the seventh 
thousand years from the time of the rule of Adam. What and who is coming in the seventh day? It is the coming of God. So when Moses preaches to Israel, he gives them the Sabbath. And he says, look, keep the Sabbath holy. Don't do any work on that day. That day belongs to God. Don't do anything in that day. Well, look, that is not for you. That's for the wicked. The wicked are supposed to rest from their wickedness on the seventh day as a sign that in the seventh thousand year of their rule, God would come and erase them from the face of the earth and give them eternal rest. Now listen carefully. So God gave to Israel a Sabbath to keep them in remembrance that in a certain day, somebody's going to come. And when he comes, his presence will mean the end of their world. Let's see if we're right. Moses comes 2,000 years after Adam. We're marking time. Jesus comes 2,000 years after Moses. We're marking time. Now, we have a problem here because the Jesus of this New Testament is a man that is not out of season. The Jesus of this New Testament comes on time and he's casting out devils. Now, this is a very important function. If you understand if Jesus were not on time, he couldn't cast out Satan. Satan had a season. And the scriptures of the Bible say God's coming is after the working of Satan. God's coming is after the working of Satan. So Satan got a season. He got a season to deceive human beings. He has a season to put the whole earth under his power. But when his season is up, God says, I will come. When God comes, the whole world is lost. Therefore, the picture of the lost sheep or the lost piece of money, all of this is to show you how deep the people of God would be lost in the wickedness of the enemy of God. But God said, I don't care where you are lost. I will find you and bring you again. Look at this now. I don't care how far away from me you have fallen. I will reconcile you to me. I will redeem you. I will save you from my destruction of the wicked whose season has come to an end. Time. What are our actions in accord with the time? Now the historical Jesus comes 4,000 years after Adam. Now we are 2,000 years from Jesus. And Wise people are looking for his return. Y'all yes, all right? Yes, you sure now? Yes, if you're not all right, just hang with me a minute and it'll get real clear. We are measuring time. Now, if God is coming in the seventh day or the seventh thousand year from Adam, then the Jesus of 2,000 years ago is not the Jesus that we are clamoring over. A 
of the gospel. Because the Jesus of 2,000 years ago came at the early part of the fifth day. But the Jesus that comes in the Sabbath day comes as a perfect witness that God is not to come, but God is in the world. And the work of saving, redeeming, reconciling is going on because God is present. Oh, I hope that you will catch this. Six centuries after Jesus, Muhammad is born. That should tell every Muslim that Jesus as a prophet prophesying the coming of one and six centuries later the prophet Muhammad is born born in Arabia and prophet Muhammad gives you a sign now listen to me carefully prophet Muhammad gives you a sign of what you're going to see at the end of the season of the wicked. Prophet Muhammad comes with the Quran. And with the Quran, Prophet Muhammad literally and his companions capture the world with this book. And the so-called Christians who believed in Jesus, many of them retreated under the onward march of Islam under Prophet Muhammad as a sign of something. Because the so-called followers of Jesus and the so-called followers of Moses were not carrying into practice what these noble men actually taught. So the righteous were overcome by the wicked. Moses' teaching was overcome and broken by the presence of Nimrod. That Jesus' teaching was overcome and broken by the power of the wicked. All they did was come in among the righteous, trying to follow Jesus and cause the people to deviate from his teaching. And right now, we have millions of people who have the name of Jesus, but they have deviated from the true message of Jesus. It's true. And now you have millions of people bearing witness to Allah and Muhammad, but they also have deviated from the message of Muhammad. It's true. If the Muslim world had not deviated, brothers, sisters, there would be no need for Prophet Muhammad to indicate in the Hadith that the Mahdi, a guided one, would come in the end of this world. What would be the need for a guided one? whose work is to guide people back to the right path. If you were on the path, then you don't need the Mahdi. But because the whole world has deviated, we need somebody to guide us back to the path of God. What time will he appear? Since the work of Prophet Muhammad is established, but not correct today, the work of Jesus is established but not correct. The work of Moses is established but not correct because the followers of all of these worthies have been overcome by Satan. Now, if you wish to take issue with what I'm saying, I want you to think with me. Satan has a season and I don't care what the prophets did they could not overcome Satan this is not Jesus's world this is not Muhammad's world this is not Moses world this is Satan's world talk to me if 
the prophets were actually in power, God's word and God's righteousness would be established among all the righteous communities. But you don't have righteousness on this earth. You have evil coming in the name of righteousness. You have wickedness coming in the name of the prophets of God. Why? Satan got a season and nothing was going to interfere with Satan in his season. And I'm sorry to say this, but it's the truth. Satan just is the God of his own world. Now hear me well. A prophet cannot interfere with a God. I'm going to say it again. Now I want you to hear me. A prophet is not powerful enough to overthrow the rule of a God of his own world. Satan is a God. He's a wicked God. Is that right? He's a God of evil, but we say as Muslims, La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. But you can't make that claim until you yourself have conquered the force of evil in yourself. Then you can say there's no God but Allah. You can say from your mouth, there's no God but Allah. That's, that's all right. Everybody can say that. Your mouth don't bear witness to the truth. The Arabs say there's no God but Allah, but they bow to America. Talk back to me. There's no God but Allah, but if, if Bush say something, I'll do what Bush say. Well, if you don't have any power, you and your God, over Bush and over the wicked rulers of the world, then don't say there's no God but Allah. Say there's no God but Allah and Bush in your life. But when we say there is no God but Allah, we mean that God, Allah is supreme in our life. And we're not bowing down to nothing or nobody but God. And our life is a testimony to that which we say out of our mouth. But to say there's no God but Allah and then go smoke a reefer. To say there's no God but Allah and then invade your brother's house going after your brother's wife. To say there's no God but Allah and sleep overpowers you and you can't pray. Then you are a liar when you say there's no God but Allah. Then you have put everything under the power of God. In God's own season. When you can make that claim. There is no power anywhere to stop you from being what you want to be and doing what you want to do. If it's right, it's in season. Jesus was overpowered by Satan. All Jesus' disciples were overpowered by Satan. The church was overpowered by Satan. The mosque is overpowered by Satan. Why? Because Satan was in his season. And there is to everything a time and a season. And wickedness has a season. And so we have suffered in the season of wickedness. Our fathers have suffered in America in the season of wickedness. We have not been able to mount an offensive for justice. And every time we get a leader, get a teacher, the wicked make short order of them because it was their season. But when time say is up 
you can believe that the wicked will never be able to do in God's season what they did in their own. And so my brothers and sisters, in both the Bible and Quran, the end of the wicked's time is foretold by the prophets. The presence of a man is foretold by the prophets, a man in whom is the embodiment of God's spirit. In whom is the embodiment of God's truth. And when that person comes, and no power that's going to uproot him. He's on time. He's in his season. And when he comes and speaks to you, if you recognize him and join on with him, you become successful. You will begin to overpower Satan. Not talk about it, but actually do it. Now, let us conclude. There is a scripture in the book of Revelations that says Jesus is talking about himself as a spiritual and physical person. He said, I am the seed of David, the root of Jesse, the bright and the morning star. Stop right there. See, when Jesus comes, if he's the morning star, when you see Jesus, he's telling you, your night is over. You're coming up into a brand new day now. Because the morning star appears in the darkest hour of the night to let you know that the night is soon passing away and that morning star leads you right up into the light of the sun. A brand new day, a new season. And all you have to do is relate well to the morning star. Follow the morning star. And it will lead you to the light of the sun. And when the light of the sun strikes you, don't rebel against the light. Walk in the light. And let the light direct your path, your thoughts, and your actions. Then you'll be in the season of God. And there is no power of Satan that can afflict you if you follow the light. Isn't that something? Now let's see about this morning star and then go home. The Bible closes like this. Behold, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. This is the Old Testament, Malachi. The last book of the Old Testament. Behold, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, I will send you who? Elijah. What is Elijah's job? He's to prepare the path for the coming of this mighty one that both scriptures of Bible and Holy Quran tell us is coming. Man. This is why the Jews today have not accepted Jesus of 2,000 years ago as the Messiah. They knew that if Jesus were in fact the Messiah, their power would be ended totally. And that's why they keep looking. And they're not looking for the Messiah to accept him. They're looking to, for the Messiah to kill him. 
they have the same mind of Herod. Herod made it appear like he wanted to go find the baby Jesus so he could go worship the baby. Uh-uh. He wanted to kill the baby. But he didn't want the others to know his wicked intention. This is why white people watch you so carefully. Because they know that coming up out of you is going to come one that the whole world has been looking for. Whether you take it or leave it alone, you are more than who you think you are. You are a people. You are a people who have been allowed to come into bondage to prove God. Like Job was allowed to go under the power of Satan to prove God. Look at you. I mean, if ever a people have been under Satan, check us out. Here's a people, just look at yourself for a minute, brothers and sisters. You didn't come here like the rest of the people, seeking any freedom. You had it. They brought our fathers here, what? In the holes of ships, right? Did they bring us here to be citizens? What did they bring us here for? To be slaves. <clears throat> Is slavery in harmony with God? Well then, if they were allowed to make us slaves, it must have been a season. And if there's a season, there's a purpose for that season. Oh, brothers and sisters, are you listening? <laughs> we were made slaves. We didn't want to be slaves. Many of our fathers jumped overboard in the Atlantic into the mouths of sharks. Rather than come here to be made slaves, we didn't want no slavery. Many of our people fought against it. But did we remain slaves? Then if you fight against something and have no power to overcome it, then there's a higher power that has said, this must be. And since you can't stop it, let it be. Submit and wait till you seize them. Isn't that what Job said? I'm going to wait till my change comes. Job knew he couldn't fight this thing. One day he was rich and another day he's poor. One day he's healthy. The next day he's sick. One day he's got a family. The next day his family is killed except one. Job began to see the hand of God. In his suffering, he didn't know that God and the devil had a conversation about him. Job didn't know that God said, where are you coming from, Satan? He said, well, I've been going up and down to and fro in the earth, seeking whom I may devour. He said, you sure have, and you just about ate up everybody. He said, but have you considered my servant Job? He fears God and eschews evil. Satan said, sure, I considered him. I know your servant is with you because you got this hedge around him. But you remove that hedge from him and I'll make him curse you to your face. God said, go ahead, I'll let you have him. Just don't take his life, you got him. And this is what happened to us. You didn't know it. But this was already written in the prophecies of the Bible and Quran that we were going to come into bondage in a strange land among a strange people for 400 years. You couldn't stop it. It's the season. And the purpose was to make white people great and powerful. Like it was with Pharaoh. Make Pharaoh great and powerful so that nobody could take him down but God himself. The Bible say, I raised you up, Pharaoh, for this purpose, to make myself known. Isn't that something? I 
allowed you to take my people into bondage to bring them to nothing so that when I come, I could take one of the slaves and put a rod in his hand and take a slave and make him bring you to your knees because I'm God. And I have power over everything. Well, what took you so long in coming, God? I don't come out of season. I came on time. I gave Pharaoh a season and he had to do his work. And his work was to show the world that he's a God beside me. And this is what white folk have done. Shown the world, look, I am God. Bow down to me, all you Negroes. Colored people, coons and shines. Bow down to me, all you Mexicans and Hispanic people. Bow down to me, Asian and African and Arab. I am God. Look at me, he says. I give life and I cause death the same way God does. God put the planets up. I put a contraption up, have it revolving around God's planets. I'm God too. God make fire come down from heaven. I make fire come down from heaven. I develop the atomic bomb and you niggas better get in line or I'll blow you to bits with my atomic weapon. I'm God too. God created life. And I'll go in my laboratory and make synthetic life. Don't mess with me. I'm a God beside God. You do things the natural and the normal way. I'll do it unnatural and abnormal to show you I do what I please. It's a man showing you he's God. You tell the white man you want to bow down only to God and see will he not become angry with you. Any of you in this audience who are Jehovah's Witnesses, you tell him that you want to follow God, see what he does. He put you in jail. He did that for the Jehovah's Witness. You stand up in your holiness and say, I won't serve you in your armed forces to fight these unjust wars against third world people. I won't do it and I won't send my child to do it. See, won't he come? and say, well, you're going to jail. What crime have I committed? You're just standing up for God, and unless you stand up for me as God, then I can't let you worship. White folks are heavy. They don't mind you having a non-threatening religion that bows down to them, but the moment you challenge them, your religion is threatening, they deal with you. He wants us to worship him as God. Check this out. Who named you? I know you're going to say your father. Your father didn't name you. Well, your father didn't have no name Johnson and Jones and Smith and O'Reilly and Culpepper and Overstreet and Underhill and Overbrook. That's not your father's name. That's white folks' name. And white folk named you then if you want to go in an African name, you got to go before a white man and explain to him why you want to change your name. But he didn't go before nobody to explain why you got the name you got. He's gone. You want to buy anything in my world? You got to come by me. You want to sell anything in my world? You got to come by me. You want to preach in my world? I'll license you, nigga. Don't stand up and talk about you a preacher unless I give you a license. So the white man licensed you to sell fish and he licensed you to preach the gospel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, who is he then? Yes, sir. He's trying to say he's a God beside God. He makes bullets and guns to enforce his power. But he's in his season. And nothing could interfere with him in his season. But the season for us to be slaves is over. 
Now, if you want to continue to act like that, you're not going to be successful. You want to continue to act like a fool, you're not going to be successful. Yes, you can go and tell white folk, give you a job. They may or they may not. But it's a season for you to get up and make a job for yourself. If you don't do that, you're not going to have no jobs. You are out of season, black man and woman. White folk got you fighting and killing each other. You continue that, great loss. The season is for us to get together, overcome our difficulties and our divisions. God will make a way for us if we want to come into unity with one another. But you got to make a step in the right direction for God to help you. Time is on your side, but you got to act in a timely fashion. What season is it? It's the season for righteousness. Well, what is righteousness? Obedience to God. You can't go wrong obeying God. Well, I, 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 I love God. <laughs> but I love fellow man. In a strange kind of way. And, and I know God will accept me. Who said so? Who told you that? That's right. That's right. This don't tell you that. That's right. The Bible don't say it. And the Quran doesn't say it. Well then, if your actions and mine are not in harmony with the standard laid down by God, then to practice that which is against God's standard is to lose. To do what God asks is to be a winner and we want to be winners we've been losers too long and you can't win today being wrong you win by being right and being right is hard it's not easy in a wrong world but to hold knowledge in unrighteousness is not going to help you to be unrighteous and to know better is to lay down in a bed of mental torment and misery. You know what's right, then do what's right. If you know what's right, then you know the time. Then you gotta act in accord with right or you start going backwards. The bright and the morning star just at the end of the time of the wicked he will appear and his name will be Elijah and Elijah will be a herald of the coming of God man that's so beautiful and you know brothers and sisters you think so little of yourself it's so easy for you to accept listen now to accept all the Hebrew prophets and you never met one of them but you believe in all of them <laughs> and none of them taught you anything you still in the same condition that white folk put our fathers in come on it's so easy for us to accept the prophets of every other nation but we cannot accept that God would do for us what he did for everybody else, raise somebody up among us to teach us. And I say to you, there is no Arab on the planet that can teach you. And if there's an Arab brother in here, that doesn't mean you're not my brother. But you don't know how to teach these people. Ain't nothing in your history will prepare you to teach black people. This is an unusual problem. And it's going to take an unusual solution. And an unusual teacher.
And I'm very proud to say that God raised that kind of teacher among us in the honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I want to say to you that I and we who had the privilege of hearing him, being taught by him, I know what he did for me. I know what I was before I met him and his teachings. And I know what I am becoming as a result of what he taught me. I know that now I'm on time. How do I know? Because in the physical world, when my mother and my father lay down and I was conceived, I was put into motion in the darkness of my mother's womb. And motion means change. I was once a sperm in the testicles of my father and an egg in the ovary of my mother but sperm met with ovum and a tiny life germ formed a tiny cell of life so microscopic you could put it on the head of a pin and it would have plenty of room to move about and that's the way our life started but we were in motion and then in that motion we became a clot and then we became an embryo and then we became a fetus and at the proper time we came forth out of a bag of water with eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart pumping on its own lungs, breathing in oxygen without sifting through the umbilical cord to feed. Now I could go directly to my mother's breast and I nursed from her and grew stronger. Ever moving, ever changing, I am a creature of time. I don't know when the bell will toll and say time is up for me because I'm finite in the infinite mastery of God in time. I come and I go like you come and you go. You are on your way to a grave and an appointed time. So what are you doing with the time that you got? You, my young sisters and brothers, good time party mamas and papas. What's happening tonight? It's a party, baby. So you dance the night away. You party the night away. Time slipping away. And you look around. You a young man, haven't done nothing with your life yet, time slipping away. But in that time, if you don't know what you're doing, you're putting alcohol in this that ain't made to run from alcohol. Putting cigarette smoke in this that is not made to be fueled by cigarettes. Putting improper foods and drugs in this holy temple house of God time slipping away from you so you're 14 but you're 30 because your whole body has deteriorated you're going to Wendy's and Burger King eating greasy food when you should be putting better food in your system but you don't understand what life is and what time is because you're not moving anywhere mentally even though your body is growing from an infinitesimally small microscopic dot 
to a huge man and woman, 120, 130, 150, 220 pounds. You move from nothing to a full grown man, but where are you moving in your head? Where have you advanced here, sister? Well, I'm just gonna put on my fine dress and fix my hair and get on down to the disco and find me a fool that'll buy me a drink or something. <laughs> Where you moving in your head, woman? So you end up with a baby. Mistake number one, you made the wrong choice. Or you end up killing babies to keep from having the responsibility of your misguided actions. But then you end up messing up your insides with abortions, all kinds of quick chemical devices that the white man makes for you. What are you doing with your time? It's slipping away. You're dying every day that you live, man. And you got to get in season in order to make your life have meaning. And so, beloved brothers, sisters, the scripture says, Arise and shine, for thy light is come. Thy light is come. If you're in harmony with the light, you start making changes here. Now you're in motion mentally. I started 37 years ago like that same microscopic dot that I was in the physical world. That's the way I was in the spiritual world because I didn't know God and I didn't know myself and I didn't know the truth. There was no time for me, no measure. But when I heard the truth, and decided to walk in the light of that truth, I began making change. And every day that I live, I'm evolving into another manifestation, not of what I was, but what I'm becoming. And you know what? Because I heard the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I'm telling you what he did for me, and what he through us can do for all of our people and really for the world. Brothers and sisters, look. White folk today are frightened. Of Farrakhan. What did I do? I don't carry any weapons. I'm not a drunkard or reefer smoker, dope user. What do you do? I tell the truth. And I try to live by the truth that I tell. Does that make me a threat? Mm -hmm. I'm a witness that we're in the season of righteousness. <clears throat> I'm a witness that if you think right, act right, God will make you powerful. I'm a witness. The government is against me. I'm their number one enemy. That's terrible. The Jews don't like Farrakhan. Why? What have I done? They knew that somebody was going to come. And now they know he's here. And how do they know he's here? There's a witness. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is not physically present, but he's here. He's here in me. I can't say that he's in nobody else. I know he's in me. And I know the effect of his presence in me. If I'm on time, nobody can defeat what I'm saying. 
Many of you don't like it, but there's nothing you can do about it. And to prove that I am from him and on time. And that when you're in your season, nothing can destroy you in your season. To prove that, I'm going to show you how God does this. He stirs up all your enemies. And he brings them together. And they become allies. To focus and destroy one person. And then God destroys all of them. To prove that's my man. He's on time. He's in his season. And there's no power that can uproot my man in his season. Now, I want to say this to you Muslims. Don't be alarmed at this. Because this is the end of the wicked. The wicked have to do what the wicked have always done. Come against the righteous. And even though the wicked are many in number and the righteous are few, yet in our season, the few will put to flight the many because God is in his season. No power will disturb the nation of Islam. No power will stop the rise of black people. We're in our season. Yeah. So God stirs up the enemies. Now the Jews are formidable enemies, brother. Nobody wants the Jew as an enemy. That's why everybody placates Jews. Talk sweet to them. Bows when they come around. Not Farrakhan. I have never gone to them. They come to me. They sit and have dinner with me and talk to me. They want to get closer to see what they can see in a man that they have not yet been able to destroy. The government of the United States is a powerful enemy. And they don't like Farrakhan. their problem those are two powerful enemies the communists I opened up a communist paper the other day they are talking down on Farrakhan so now you got the Jews the government the communists mm. that's big three there doctor that should be enough enemies right for anybody <laughs> <laughs> but among the followers of the honorable Elijah Muhammad who don't believe that I am an expression of him and from him they are stirred up now by the success that God is blessing us with so they have come against me or are planning the orthodox Muslim world Don't like Farrakhan. What have I done? Well, you're doing too much good. But it's not in the name of the him whom I think you should do good in. I don't understand. So some of my Muslim brothers who are what is called orthodox, I really don't know why they use that term. Because it's not a proper term. It's not a good term. Because every Muslim should be ortho. Orthodox means right. And I don't know any Muslim that's not right. If he's a Muslim and he's submitting to God, he's right. Think over this now. So some of my Muslim brothers coming together saying, we got to stop Farrakhan. What? 
Stop me for what and from doing what? He's preaching and he's bringing thousands of people to what he's talking about, but he's not talking like we're talking. Does that mean I'm not right? If you are right, then you're in season. Then show me the fruit of your being right. If your work is not bearing fruit and mine is, then why not come to me and ask me to teach you how we're doing it? But what happens is envy and jealousy comes up in the heart. And when envy comes up, murder comes up right behind it. I have done nothing to no black person that I could go to God tonight and be ashamed of. But yet my brothers, some of them wish to take my life. Another brother calling me the second beast of revelations. What is the problem with you? If I were a beast, <clears throat> you wouldn't live after calling me such. <laughs> if I were a beast, and I have the power by God to crush my enemies, and I have those with me, if I just gave them a signal, they would eat you up like <laughs> multimedia. And the army that you see is nothing in comparison to the unseen army of Farrakhan that's everywhere. When a man got power, but he hides the power because he loves you in your foolishness. That don't mean he don't have power because he won't show it. I pray for you. And I want the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to know. And as long as nobody aggresses against us, don't you ever attack anyone because of what they say from their mouths. Because one argument begets a better one. And the Quran says argue with them in the best manner, but to fight and kill your people is not what God has raised us up for. But if we are attacked, then don't spare nothing. Nobody, whoever the attacker is, then you find them and kill them wherever you find them. That we don't fear nobody but God. Yes, and we're not going to attack anybody. But if we are attacked. Then the Quran said fight with those. Who fight with you. And then let's see who our lies with. If you want to know who God is with. Then you put that kind of test down. And if you're a real Muslim, you are forbidden by God to be the aggressor. 
So the moment somebody aggresses against us, they're out of the path of God, then kill them in that path of aggression. You say, well, Brother Farrakhan, this don't seem like the righteous talk of a righteous person. Why not? <laughs> Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, loved his people. He loved his family. He never wanted to fight his own people. He reasoned with them. He talked with them. But after a while, he began to be so successful. They got together in a confederation of wicked opponents against him. Then he had to kill them. Because they made war on him. And I say this with all humility. Don't ever let me pick up the sword. Because I am a peaceful man. But if I pick it up, I will never put it down until everybody confesses and every knee has bowed, either by force or otherwise. Don't push God's man to a position where you wouldn't like it. I love my people. And I don't mind walking into hell with a gasoline jacket on for the liberation of black people. But what is so hateful is when envy comes up in us as brothers and sisters that envy puts on a mask like you fighting for God. But in your envy, you want to harm your brother. Well, we are in the season where God will stir the hearts of the enemies. And I say this, Muslims, stand up and stand tall. And if we must die, let us die fighting for Islam, yes, sir. fighting for righteousness, yes, sir. fighting for the establishment of God's will and his kingdom. Yes, but let us never be the aggressor against anyone. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Time is on your side. Every one of you that are here today, you make a decision to do what is right. If you're killing your people, stop it. Not the season. If you're killing yourself, stop it. It's not the season. But if you will allow the light of God to direct your life, act in accord with right principle, and brother, there's no power in the heavens above or in the earth beneath that can stop you from being successful. Black brother, stand up like a man in righteousness, for this is the season. Sisters, you also, when you leave here today, make up your mind. I'm going to be right. I'm going to do my best to do what's right. And God will bless your every action of right. And if something comes against you for trying to be right, that's only natural to test your will for right. But don't give up right because some opposition comes. Stand firm for right. And as this for right, but don't give up right because some opposition comes, stand firm for right. 
And as the scriptures say, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Try it. It's the season. It's time. May Allah bless you as I greet you in peace. Thanking you for being with us today. Assalamu alaikum.